What is going on guys? So in this video, I'm going to teach you how to manage your resources in PvP from not only surviving but thriving in outnumbered situations. I can guarantee you if you adopt these practices and understand them, you will see improvements in your overall gameplay. It doesn't matter if you play a tank or a healer, a gank blade, a 1vx build or a bomber, you always have room to improve and get every ounce of resources from your build in any scenario you are in. Now this is a continuation of my must delayed how to survive series. Now part one I did several months ago on the basic foundations of healing and his calculations. Well this one is all about resource management, how to sustain better and not run out of resources in five seconds in a fight. So the most important thing in my opinion in trying to manage your resources is having enough built in sustain required to fit your playstyle. There are several key areas we'll explore in this video. Now here is a little chart to help you understand the most important aspects on how you will sustain. The class you play is by far the most important, ranging from inherent passives like the battle roar on the DK that give resources whenever you use an ultimate, or percent based recoveries like on the Nightblade, or class skills like Dark Conversion on the Sorcerer that exchanges one resource for the other. Now these are just some small examples that we will explore much more in depth. I'm just trying to give you guys an overview. But just know every class has tools to help it sustain better, that do vary greatly between different classes and specs. Some are better than others, obviously, but generally they have some tools or some usage uh, to have a decent, better sustain. But before we get started, if you guys are enjoying my content, don't forget to subscribe, it's free, and you never miss an upload. Also, if this video helps you in any way, don't forget to smash that like button. Without further ado, let's get right into it. So where do we exactly start to get you more sustain? Now this question can be tackled from several different avenues, but in my opinion, the best place to start is at the foundation, and that's going to be your race. Now, for you veteran players out there, you guys can listen to this information, but really don't need to, as you kind of already know what you're doing. You just need a little bit more experience and a little bit more know-how on actually how to fight in combat, on how to sustain your resources. But for newer players, I really want to bring them up to speed and kind of teach them the groundworks. So if you are lower CP and newer, like under 500, uh, I highly recommend you guys listen to me on this. Uh, you can pick whatever race you want, but I highly recommend you guys take my advice. So if you're playing a Magicka build, I highly recommend a Breton race. And if you're playing a Stamina build, I recommend either Wood Elf or an Imperial. Imperial is my first choice. If you don't have the Imperial Edition, I recommend Wood Elf. Now, you can pick a damage race if you want to. You just have to change your, your Jewelry Glyphs around. It makes it a little bit more complicated. But just, just listen to me. Those are probably the three best races that you can pick. The reason why you go with a Wood Elf if you're lower CP, if you want to play Stamina, is because you need a little bit more sustain. So you ha have the, re the great recovery passive on that racial passive. The Imperial is a good solid race for in-game PvP. A lot of people use it. So it's a good starting point for you to start off on, on the right foot for your new build uh, if you're going to be playing Stamina. Now, those are just my recommendations. Obviously, if you want to play something else, by all means, do so but that's kind of what i recommend now building on the foundation like i said earlier you need to have good sustain on your build so you have to build enough sustain into your class with your money stone with your food choice with your jewelry enchants those are very important now this is going to be a quick overview and we're going to go into more actual gameplay examples that's kind of the bulk of this video is what i want it to be so the food, if you're going to be playing stamina, I highly recommend Lava Foot Soup and Salt Rice. This is the best in slot food for all stamina builds in PvP. For magic builds, this is where things get a little bit more complicated, as their sustain is different. Uh, you really can't put an actual number on it per se, uh, but anywhere between 1,000 to 2,000 magic recovery is good. If you go more cost reduction on your build, typically for magic dragonites, then 1,000 is going to be okay. But if you're going to be more sustained approach in running recovery glyphs, then definitely about 2,000 recovery is pretty decent. Now, you can adjust this accordingly to your liking and your preferences. If you feel like you're running out of resources, obviously build more sustain. But it's a lot of testing on your end to really fill out what you like. Uh, people prefer different things. Some people like cost reduction on, on DK. Some people like recovery. It's a lot of what you really prefer on how to sustain your build. Now, as you get more experience, obviously you can adjust your sustain around to drop less recovery and go more damage if you feel like you can do that. There's obviously sweet spots for both, but ultimately sustain is the most important aspect in PvP because if you run out of resources, then you're pretty much dead. So it's a lot of experience and overall understanding of the game that really will add that extra bit of sustain to your build. Uh, for food choices for magic builds, they use sugar skulls or uh, this smoked bear haunch both of those are very strong most of them use sugar skulls though 
with the Atronach Mundus Stone. Now, most people, in my opinion, and at least kind of what I recommend, is if you're a Magicka build, go with the uh, Atronach Mundus Stone, and if you are a standard build, go with the Serpent Mundus Stone. Those are pound for pound the best Mundus Stones in the game for the respective classes uh, and specs. Um, you just can't beat them, and then go damage on your Jewelry Glyphs to get a little bit more, uh, more damage in that regard. But that's pretty much all for the, the foundation aspects. Just make sure you have a built, enough built-in sustain. Kind of a recap here. If you have about 2,000 stamina recovery, that's pretty good on a stamina build. If you have about 1,500, I would say magic recovery on a magic build, that's going to be plenty enough to an extent. Obviously, different classes have different aspects of sustain, and we will definitely explore that more in this video. Uh, that's going to be the next topic we're going to talk about is kind of what skills you use and your passives that are most important on those classes. We can now get into more intermediate and advanced topics. So we're gonna talk about class skills and passives and how they actually sustain and really what you're looking for, you know, some skills obviously, um, and basically how which class sustains. So this is gonna encompass both Magicka and Stamina builds. So we're gonna start off with a Nightblade class. They typically sustain bit off their base recovery. They have really good base recovery at 15%, which scales very nicely, obviously with the Serpent or the Atrium Munda Stone. Uh, if you're also talking about Rally, that gives them 20 or a 15% recovery. So they have overall a lot of stamina sustain on the Nightblade or even magic sustain uh, when you pocket potion and all that. So it's ultimately one of the highest sustaining classes out there. And they also have a very useful skill in siphoning attacks or leeching strikes. Whichever morph is gonna be, uh, leeching strikes is the stamina morph and uh, siphoning attacks is the magic morph. And this just gives you uh, healing and magic back whenever you light attack, whenever you light attack weave, which is very important. And then you get a big chunk of, of magic or stamina uh, back after the duration ends or or when you refresh it. So and it's based off the duration. So the skill is very good overall for sustain. It's very widely used, very good for a good reason. It gives you health back, stamina back, and then gives you a big chunk of stamina after the after the duration ends. And this has no effect on overall. A stamina sustain either so uh, if you use this and you have 200 recovery you're going to get the same value as if you have 2000 recovery so it ultimately actually helps classes with lower recovery versus classes with higher recovery as they may not be able to take advantage as as much as someone with lower uh, overall sustain uh, wardens they sustain similarly to the nightblade uh, they have a good recovery passive at 12%. I forgot the name, but it gives them a good overall stamina and mac recovery. And then they have the bull dash. This is actually an active skill that gives you weapon and spell damage. It's free. Um, and it gives you a cleanse on top of that. So it's a really loaded skill. It's very good. Um, so Netch is just overall amazing. It just gives you magicka or stamina back, whichever morph you pick. And it's just very solid. They also have a, a green balance passive. I, I don't remember the name exactly, but it gives you 250 stamina or magic based on your, I guess, your lower resource. So if you have lower stamina and you heal somebody with a green balance ability, you're going to get stamina back, I do believe. It's very good overall for your sustain, especially using something like vines, as it will proc on yourself so you can actually heal yourself with vines and actually gain 250 resources every second, I do believe. Very strong for overall PvP. Necromancers, they have some of the highest sustain in the game. They have a very good passive in Undead Confederate, which gives them 200 stamina and mag recovery whenever they have a active pet bonus active. So this is going to be like their spirit guardian, their arcanist, uh, or their blast bones. And when this is up, they get 200 stamina and mag recovery, which is insane. It scales very nicely. It's on a percent base. It's a it's a base number, so it will scale even better with percent base uh, multipliers like you know rally and potions and all that. They also have mortal coil, which gives them stamina back over time as they it's also a free heal so i guess it's always great for sustain uh, something that's free uh necros are just very tanky they have great overall sustain and healing power and all the whole nine yards necromancers are just very good uh, in overall pvp dk's sustain differently than every other class out there um they gain resources through their ultimate so whatever the ultimate they use they get resources back for the ultimate consumed um and then a, a new change and buff to dk's overall has been the aspect, if they proc a status effect on the enemy, they get 1,000 stamina and mac recovery. Um, I forgot the I forgot how long you have to wait for it. I think it's once every one second or five, no, it's 500 milliseconds. That's what it is. So it's once every 500 milliseconds. So if you keep on proccing status effects, mainly the burning and the poison, 
So if you proc the burning status effect, you're going to get 1000 magic. And if you proc the uh, poison status effect, you're going to get back uh, stamina. So it's very, it's very strong overall for DK sustain. It was a very nice quality of life change for that class and overall better for overall survivability and damage. So you can actually heal yourself and not run out of resources in like five seconds. So for the Templar, they have some great sustain tools. A uh, Magplar does extremely uh, well with the overall sustain. So for Templar, they have a skill like Channel Focus or Rune Focus. I do believe that's a Stamina Morph is Rune Focus. But basically, it gives you Stamina back or it gives you Magicka back. Um, and it gives you a, a ton of Sustain. Okay, so it gives you upwards of 480 Magicka or Stamina Recovery, whichever morph you pick. It basically makes this skill cost nothing and it gives you a heal inside of it and it gives you resistances. The skill is absolutely amazing. It really makes overall Sustain on Magic Templar and Stamplar a lot easier. Um, I could definitely see them adjusting this in the future, but as of right now, it's one of the best overall sustain tools uh, in the game. Uh, then you have magic builds, uh, specifically the Magplar has access to Honor the Dead, which gives them 18% um, of the ability's cost every two seconds over six seconds if you heal anyone who is below 75% health. So you're going to get 18% cost of about a skill that costs 4,000. So it's very good for overall sustain, uh, especially whenever you're in a tense fight and it costs quite a bit, you know, it kind of rewards you back for overall sustain. So you don't run out of juice so fast. And then for Sork, they have access to dark deal and dark conversion. That's probably the most notable aspects of overall amazing skill for sustain. Uh, basically they just take their off stat resource. So if you're a mag Sork, you're going to turn your stamina into magic and vice versa for the Sam Sork, you're going to turn your magic into stamina. And it's just great for sustain because you can literally run probably about uh, 14, 1500 stamina recovery on a stam sork and have insane sustain because you can spam dark deals and just turn your magicka into stamina. It's very good, trust me. Uh, it's one of the best sustained skills in the game and it heals you on top of that. So overall, every class has access to a skill or a passive that helps them with sustain. Some are better than others, obviously, but each class has its own unique playstyle and, uh, and own unique kit to, to be viable to a certain extent. Now, obviously, every class, now some classes are better, yes, but every class has access to some type of sustain uh, in the game for overall pvp so now that we have pretty much all of the basic foundational stuff out of the way we can talk about some do's and don'ts on how to sustain and then a little bit later we're going to talk about like some gameplay examples of me doing like a little commentary kind of what i'm thinking and how i'm sustaining my resources uh, so the first don't is don't spam your skills i think this is mainly going to be for newer players um, but oftentimes i'll see a lot of people mainly newer players is they'll just start spamming their heals or they'll start spamming their DPS or they'll start spamming uh, roll dodge, something like that, just to mitigate damage. And sometimes that works, you know, mainly as you get more experience, you can kind of do that because you know your limits. But as a newer player, you'll just run out of resources and you'll be like, oh, I'm out of stamina, I can't do anything. Uh, and most like high end PVP players can tell when somebody's out of resources because they play a little bit differently. It's kind of like a shark whenever they see blood in water. I don't know, it's kind of weird. Um, it's kind of like a predator instinct when you see somebody out of stamina. I don't know, it, maybe it's just me, but you can really tell when people are out of resources because they'll start to jump, they'll start to do something other than what they have been doing. So when you stop spamming your skills and you kind of calm down and let the, you know, let the butterflies go out of your stomach and you kind of um, aren't so nervous anymore about PVP, that's when you can really start to do very well because you're kind of comfortable with it uh, and that's just gonna, just gonna take time just try to focus on you know trying to get more calm and just experience 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 is really key for this honestly just keep playing pvp get comfortable with your class that's a, a good recommendation i guess as well is really play just one class and get very proficient at that one so then you're not so nervous whenever you're playing it because when you spam your skills you're running out of resources so quick and it, you're just going to be out in, in probably 15, 20 seconds and you're not going to be able to do anything else. Another thing, uh, another do, I guess you could say, is play smart. Um, don't overextend in PvP, especially when you're playing outnumbered. You really have to be on the ball of your overall healing. So you have to be, you know, healing yourself pretty much all the time because you're always going to be taking damage. But play smart. Don't run into a group of 10 unless you're just memeing around and you're just wanting to have some fun. 
uh, like if you're a bomber or something, but you know you're not gonna be able to survive 1v10. You know, most people don't survive 1v10s in 99.99% of situations. So don't do it. Uh, it's, it's, that's not playing very smart because you're gonna put yourself in a bad situation. You have to roll dodge two or three times to get to a kiting location. And then you're pretty much out of stamina. You get stunned and then now you're out of stamina. Now you ha have no defensive capabilities for survival, uh, you know, with your stamina pool. And then you have to rely on the magic pool if you're a magic build. And then if you're a stamina build, you're just screwed on offense or defense. So just play smart. Don't overextend in fights. Always be looking for kiting locations where you can mitigate damage. And I am going to be doing a video kind of how to kite in line of sight. That's going to be a very important video with this one. Um, so I will try to do that one this weekend coming up um, during, close to December. Uh, so I can get that one out before the holidays. Because that's a very big video. This one has, has been too. Um, always be aware of your resources. Now this may seem kind of dumb. But like always be looking down at your at your resource pool and um, there i have a settings guide if you don't know how to do your resources or how to have them on your screen but it's so important in pvp being aware of like how much stamina you have percent based and all of that is very important because as you get more experience you know you can roll dodge you know two or three times with about five thousand stamina if you're like a like a stam build um or if you're a magic build you obviously can't roll dodge that many times but but the thing is always be aware of your resources and know your limits know how your build works um, and know when you need to start like kind of peeling back on your offensive rotations and, and going into more defensive uh, capabilities um, another thing is is when you're sustaining resources is don't always go offensive i see so many newer players make this mistake is they let their buffs run down they let their rally run down they let their armor buff run down and what this does is whenever somebody counter bursts you or kind of bursts you back you're you're caught with your pants down and you really are, are going to get bursted because if you don't have your armor buff or your heal up then you're going to have to roll dodge two or three times and if you just kept your buffs up and not gone so offensive then you wouldn't be in such a world of hurt uh in that scenario um again that's just going to be experience but that's one of the crucial things that i see newer players make mistakes on all the time i guess another do would be to pop your potions in very crucial situations be prepared to have lag or be prepared to uh, have your potions not go off or be prepared to have your skills not go off because we all know gray host uh, or in pvp in general always lags so be prepared for that always be kind of playing defensive if you are in, in a 1vx situation you're really only going to kill people whenever you can burst them so whenever they let their buffs run out or they go to offensive like i just talked about um, that's when your opportunity arises to burst them back so you're always going to be you know playing a little bit defensive and just make sure that it, whatever, whatever potion you're using whether it's tri stat pots or you know that's a movability potions try to use try to utilize it whenever your dominant resource goes down a little bit so don't always uh, this this is like a a decent tip for newer players is don't proc your potion immediately going into combat this is what kirkoff does he's my buddy i just don't know why he does it but he just always done it but don't pop your potion going into combat it does give you recovery going into a fight but you're missing out on you know seven eight thousand resources um when your resources start to get pretty low you know if you, if you need a little bit more stam whatever the case may be uh, the recovery bonuses are nice, but they aren't as good as having that 8k initial plus all of the recovery So you can then kind of refill your stamina pull back up or magic pull whatever your whatever your uh, potion is I guess not really a do or a don't but Having good weapon and spell damage or max stamina and max magic that increases your healing uh, Will ultimately increase your sustain. So how does that work as a look? Well, the more damage you have, the more healing potential you have. And the more healing potential, the less amount of times you have to heal to get that amount of healing. So if you have 200 weapon damage versus 2,000, you have to hit your healing less often to get the same amount of healing. So, for example, if I have, if I have 200 weapon damage, I have to hit Vigor maybe two times to get the same amount of healing that I have to hit Vigor one time with, with 4,000 weapon damage. Just for an example. So ultimately... Uh, damage is another way to sustain to an extent just keep that in mind is sustain is only so valuable as it helps you keep damage and keep your healing up so damage is actually more important than overall sustain to a certain extent you know they kind of go hand in hand together but that's just kind of like a, a tip that maybe people that are newer may not realize 
is damage is another way to sustain because if you have to hit your healing less often then you're going to be ultimately have a lot more resources to, to either do damage or, or roll dodge or, or do whatever you have to do uh, in a fight all right guys so here is the gameplay example now this one is rather long but we're one vxing and fighting several people outnumbered so we already killed somebody uh, there so whenever i'm focusing on you know one vxing you always want to make sure your buffs are up rally uh make sure your you know your eludes up if you're playing stamina uh, just make sure your buffs are up okay and as you'll see here throughout the fight we're kind of medium weaving or, or heavy tacking sometimes pro coming out of stealth just to get a little bit of extra sustain a lot of this is just overall just experience in the game and just muscle memory at this point I don't really think about much of what I'm doing anymore. That's why sometimes it's hard to describe kind of what I'm doing. But as you'll see there, I get stunned and I hit my siphoning attacks to return back some stamina and uh, just getting my stamina back up just a little bit. Uh, I sometimes hit it just to get me a little bit of, of stamina back. But whenever we get several people on us like this, you really have to roll dodge and just hopefully you can sustain uh, trying to just mitigate as much damage as we can. We get really low on our resources. This is just what's going to happen whenever you're fighting outnumbered. So we come around here, we get a good kite location. Uh, we get give our stamina and our resources a little bit of break to regen, go into a cloak, and now we're we're doing okay on resources. Uh, it may seem like we're low, but we have quite a bit of recovery on this spec. And kiting is what's really going to help us survive. You know, we seen we had a heavy attack there uh, into our siphoning attacks to give us uh, some big stamina. We cloak to get rid of all those dots on us. They're hurting a lot. So we just need to play a little bit defensive. We have several people on us. So we get CC'd there and we roll dodge back through them. You have different th avenues that you can go about with your overall movement. Try to go for some counter burst. The best defense is a good offense. And if you can pressure people to not have them hit you and can, can counter burst them, especially with a clever alk proc and stuff like that, you can really start to put pressure back on them and, and kind of yo-yo back the fight and, and to your favor. But we're always kiting, guys. This is the biggest thing that will save your resources so much is we're just pre-buffing our, our vigor and not having to heal for a good solid three, four, five seconds. So we don't have to, you know, uh, run out of stamina so fast. You know, we're getting a lot of pressure. Ults dropped on us and all of that. Just always moving, um, keeping our, our buffs up, our heals up. We get stunned. We go into a cloak to mitigate all damage and go into a, a soul tether there, trying to secure a kill on him but he's just holding block he jumps off and we kill him we've killed three or four people in this whole entire 1vx we're obviously not going to be able to kill all of them because they have a healer this guy right here uh if it would have let me hit my wording blades there he might have died but uh, we didn't get to secure the kill I'm trying to get go a little bit offensive because we have an opportunity here um but we peel back around because they all grew back up so again what are we doing we're going to a kiting location we're trying to get spread them out because Whenever they're right on top of each other, they're harder to kill because, you know, we're taking a lot of pressure at that point. So as you'll see, this guy overextends. Uh, and what does that mean when you overextend? You get bursted. And that's exactly what happens. That's why we break people apart. People may say we're running away like cowards, but uh, I say the cowards are the people that are fighting in, in six, seven, eight um, uh, people in a group trying to kill one person. So we kill him and then go here for the kill on him. This is what happens when you spread people out because some of them get kind of... You know, hey, I, I don't want to chase this guy forever. Some of them are, are very uh, determined to kill you. And then after you, you, you nuke their buddies, then they're all coming at you because uh, they're upset. But as you see here, we're always moving. We're going back to the tower. Uh, we killed three or four of them already. I, I could care less about trying to kill all of them right now because they're just so many. And they're very tanky DKs and they've got a lot of health, healers and all that. So I'm just trying to... Really, actually, in this live stream, I'm really trying to teach you guys how to 1vx, and uh, I'll say that a little bit later. But we're always, you know, keeping our buffs up, hitting our uh, siphoning attacks, race against time, uh, pre-buffing our vigor to get us some healing as we take damage. Our vigor will heal us. Just trying to pick our opportunity to go offensive. So we're just kind of playing cat and mouse, pretty much, I guess you could say. Get some dots on us, then we hit our tether into uh, Whirling Blades. Don't get enough of them too low, so we're going to go right back to kiting and playing a little bit defensive. Always trying to branch out the fight again and keeping them all kind of discombobulated and trying to do a, a stealthy play here, but we get pulled out by the mark. This is where your sustain comes in because you have to just pray that you have enough sustain on your build to get through this because we have to go back to this kiting location. We got caught with our pants down uh, in the middle there. 
And this is where speed comes into play as well, because we have two swift on our build, and we can move very, very fast. Get back to the tower, and we're half resources, so we're doing pretty good overall. Uh, Pre-buffing our skills, trying to find a good opportunity. We got our uh, Soul Tether up now, and we're just kiting again, uh, playing a little bit defensive. Seeing what they're doing, trying to examine kind of what they're, who we can kill, um, but always kiting in line of sight. And this is just what you have to do. Uh, if we're in full, pretty much full medium stand blade, this is just how you have to PvP uh, when you get this many people on you. Um, because I would rather survive and maybe kill a few of them than kill all of them and just die immediately or risk it for the biscuit. So this guy's getting a big brain play coming around the side. Uh, again, we're always just rotating our heels with our with our vigor and our rally, trying to see what they're gonna do. Uh, only a few of them come up here, so we're gonna go into uh, Soul Tether there. He drops down. Now we have a one v one on the healer, and if uh, yeah, uh, if we would have killed him right here, this is what it uh, would have probably won us the one v x because we could have pushed down and killed the other guys. We we seriously almost killed him, but that sucks. But got this guy. He comes back up, kill him. And now, uh, I guess they all got discouraged and ran away. Um, well, here they are. No, they're coming back. They uh, they were talking amongst themselves about what they're going to do next. Uh, how can we how can we kill them? Because I'm seriously in, in uh, five one one five medium, uh, one uh, heavy, and one light. So I'm not a very tanky uh, kind of class. I don't have a lot of mitigation. So trying to just kite them, pick our opportunities. This is just rinse and repeat. This is seriously what it is. Uh, proc our clever proc gonna go into a tether here. I do believe tether. Uh, they didn't come up though So that was not a very good idea uh, fall damage reduction OP We hit our rallies and now we are out They don't see us because we got plenty of magic to get away. I don't feel like fighting these guys anymore And that's a GG. So as you've seen there cutting kiting and line of siding keeping your resources up all go hand in hand together I am gonna do a movement guide uh, in the future probably next weekend i hope to do one because these videos do take me a long time to record to really get my thoughts out there and really try to find good examples to help you guys out but remember the biggest things is always keep your buffs up because if you drop your rally you're gonna have to roll dodge two or three times not to die and then by that time your rally will have enough of a heal and then you can burst heal but sometimes you may die in, in, in that uh, in that meantime but just biggest things make sure your buffs are up Make sure you have enough inherent sustain on your build and you will be A-OK -okay in PvP. It's just going to take a little bit of practice and experience on kind of how you can push your build and, and character uh, to its limit and overall sustain and burst damage. Like I said earlier, the, one of the best ways to play defensive is to counter burst and make them go defensive. So it, a lot of these things go hand in hand together. And ultimately, it's just experience at the end of the day. You guys will get it. I hope you guys you know found some value from this video. If you guys did, please do consider giving this video a thumbs up and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.